If you live under a rock, you probably know that there, unless you live under a rock, you probably know that there's election coming up in less than 72 hours. We've seen every poll from every angle telling a slew of different stories. But just for a second, just for one second, imagine there were no polls, no talking heads, no experts telling us who could or could pot not possibly win. Who do you think, seeing what you're seeing on the ground, would win? Think practically. You need 270 votes to win this presidency. As it stands this morning, 63% of the total number of votes from 2016 have already been cast. It's 88 million people as of this morning have already voted. In 2016, there were a total of 139 million total votes. Now, Democrats historically vote early. Republicans tend to wait and vote on Election Day in person. Why? I have no idea, but that's just the data. So how will it go on Tuesday? Here's my theory. Trump is going to win probably 336 electoral votes with a possible, possible 365. I know this goes against all the polls, but I used to handle polling for the White House Super PAC, so I know what I'm talking about here. Okay, let me explain. There's obvious strongholds for each party. The West Coast will go blue. California will be closer than it has been in recent years, but it'll end up blue. Flyover states are red. New England, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Illinois, and likely Virginia will go for Biden. Maine will split its electors. Um, and despite what Team Beto and friends are saying, Texas is not a purple state. It's red. It is deep red. And Hawaii and Alaska will basically cancel each other out. So let's talk about swing states. In Pennsylvania, the Scranton kid said he was going to ban fracking and put coal out of, out, of, out of business. You think he has a shot there? No. Same in Ohio. Michigan is steel and auto country. Trump got Ford to dump $1.2 billion into production there. People noticed. Florida is Trump's home now. But more importantly, his support among Hispanics is through the roof. The governor of Puerto Rico endorsed Trump. And judging by the thousands in the streets during spontaneous MAGA parades there, I would say Florida is pretty safe for DJT. Now, there's a few desert states with really tight races for Republicans, you know, like Arizona, and they'll probably lose a Senate seat there, actually, but Trump will win pretty easily. Same deal for North Carolina, Georgia, and Nevada. But notice how I didn't mention New York. So Trump lost his home state in 2016. He was the first president since Woodrow Wilson to lose his home state and still win the election, but then again, it was also Hillary's home state, so they may have canceled each other out. Here's the real shot. There is a real shot that Trump takes New York. You see, outside Manhattan and Albany, it's pretty much a red state. It's also pretty rural. Most of the state is understood to be decided by the area most concentrated by population, like New York City. So a lot of folks who would vote Republican really don't bother. Only about half the state voted in 2016. Trump has two things going for him here. First, he made a huge push for his base to vote no matter what state. And I think that's going to win him the popular vote this time around. Second, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio. This guy has been a failure of biblical proportions. We're talking Old Testament level catastrophe. He's reduced Manhattan to a metaphorical Chernobyl. I believe he creates a perfect storm for Trump to make a run at New York. Now, if Trump wins the state, he gets 365 electoral votes over Biden's 173. Laugh it up, folks, but everyone laughed at me in 2015 when I said Trump was going to win handedly. The only difference last time, he was only trying to get to 270. This time, he's going in for the kill. Trump is trying to leave the Democratic Party faceless with its tail between its legs for the next two decades. The left will be chasing its own shadow, trying to find out what went wrong. You know why Trump has already won, despite all his flaws? You know why many people like Trump? because he believes in and stands for something. He doesn't back down or blow in the political wind. This is why you have hundreds of thousands of people spontaneously stretching for miles in every single state, every state, even when there's no celebrities, members of the administration going or anything. These are just pop-up rallies. Love him or hate him, he lights a fire. Something that means a great deal to likely more than half the country. Donald Trump is the single best carrier of the conservative message since Ronald Reagan. However imperfect people char characterize him to be. So let me say on the record, Donald Trump is going to win his second term. But you notice how I didn't mention Joe Biden at all until now? That's because Americans are either voting for or against Trump. Joe Biden's a non-factor, folks.